All right, so let's talk about the service-oriented architecture. And what I mean by this is not necessarily microservices. Services can be of any scale. They might be, they might be relatively monolithic and communicate with some other services over the network. Or you could go all the way down to micro and even nano services that are tiny, do one thing, and spend, spend a lot of time just sharing data with other services, giving you the uh, um, holy grail approach of lots of tiny services that can be managed independently. And um, you don't necessarily have to worry about one giant compilation tree. And so this is 16 lines of code that gets you a fully working Hello World web server in Rust. And like I said, this is in the GitHub repo. And I'm going to pull up Visual Studio Code so that we can uh, take an easier to read look at this. I want it to be on the slide so that uh, when you download the slide deck, it's there. So this is the Cargo TOML file. And I've just named it Hello World Web, web Service because all it does is produce a web page that says Hello World. Um, I have used Takio, which is a uh, tokenized input output, but in reality, it's a full implementation of Go style green threading. Um, it uses multiple threads on the system threads on the back end, and then inside those system threads, it runs um, asynchronous processes that cooperatively multitask with one another. And this is the best way to make latency work for you. Um, your, uh, when your web server has to call out to a database, that process can safely pause while the database does its thing, allowing that thread to continue to serve other processes. Axum is hugely fast. It's usually in the, um, it's currently ranked number eight in the performance index on Tech Empower. Um, I've seen it ranked higher than that. Axum is maintained by the Takio Foundation. It receives updates at a tremendous um, pace. It's recently reached the point that I recommend it for almost everything. Um, it will handle um, all of the parts of the server-side stack you want from serialization to dependency injection, uh, which we'll look at in a second, to, uh, if you need it, WebSockets and um, even streaming video. Now, the program itself is 16 lines of code, and we're using a Takio macro um, that is actually rewriting the main function to include a bunch of defaults. Uh, we're not tweaking those defaults at all. We create an application, and just like a lot of other um, web servers, we bind a root, which is just a slash, to a handler, which is the function. And in this case, the function say hello text is just returning a string, hello world. So not overly impressive, but that 16 lines of code is everything you need to run a High performance web server and spin up, um, spin it up. It'll listen on port 3000 on localhost and give you the not overly impressive display of the world, hello world. Oh, sorry, the words, hello world. But nobody needs to write hello world beyond uh, learning the process. So it's kind of handy to be able to handle JSON. You know, JSON has become pretty much the lingua franca of um, web-based services talking to one another. And so the awesome thing here, if I pull up Hello World JSON, is on the dependencies, I have added CERD. CERD has pretty much become the de facto standard for serialization and deserialization in the Rust world. Um, there are others. There are some that perform a little better. CERD does perform great. And best of all, it's uh, pluggable. It talks to just about every uh, uh, format that I've needed to use so far. And I added a feature called derive, which just makes this a little easier to use. And so the new code here is I've changed the function name to hello JSON created a structure, a very simple structure, it contains a message, which is a string. And because of CERD's derive feature, I can add one line macro and derive serialize. And that automatically adds in all of the code required to take whatever your structure is and serialize it out to JSON. Um, likewise, you can add the macro deserialize to receive JSON and bring it into a strongly typed 
um, structure. So if you know exactly what JSON you're going to be sent, um, it can do that with minimal memory copies at really high performance. And so here we're making use um, for the hello JSON function, we're making use of the built in feature of Axum that you can return the type JSON. It has built in extractor and response system for that. And uh, we strongly type it so it will always return a hello JSON. And then we just return JSON and an instance of that. If you run, if you run that program, go to you know, the um, default web page, you just receive a nicely formatted JSON object. Um, and because it's all strongly typed, you can be uh, very sure that it's going to be valid. Uh, it's worth mentioning that CERD will allow you to uh, um, serialize really complicated types. Um, as long as the types you are serializing also can, are also marked as serializable, and all of the uh, native types are, you can keep nesting your structures, make huge, um, and just send around huge amounts of JSON. Um, in my testing, I found that performance does start to suffer a little bit around three gigabytes of JSON. Um, but when that came up, my first question was, if you're sending that much data, maybe something as robust as JSON isn't quite what you need. But if you need to do it, they can do it. For the full course, visit courses.ardenlabs.com.